After receiving a high-tech electroencephalography device, a woman living with acute agoraphobia begins to lose touch with reality. Inside a cluttered and dingy apartment, a former professional gamer, Hana, now works as a beta game tester. One morning, she awakens to a persistent knock at her front door. The delivery man informs her she has a package and insists on having her signature. The thought of opening the door will surely provoke her agoraphobia, so she refuses to accept the package. Because of her refusal, the man tells her it's from Cenex, a renowned technology company, and threatens to take the package with him. In the end, Hana accepts, but she orders the man to keep his distance so she can provide her signature. The delivery man begrudgingly agrees, and Hana anxiously unlocks a series of door locks. She proceeds to sign the bill, but a child's imposing presence surprises her. Curious of her reaction, the child wonders why she's scared, but Hana denies it. The child requests to enter her apartment, but she refuses. Before they can continue their conversation, the delivery man inquires if she has provided her signature. Hana immediately scrambles inside, but the child's sudden disappearance puzzles her. That day, Hana's friend Jen visits her to deliver her groceries just to make sure she's well fed. Hana is upset because she's late, but Jen explains that she has a job to attend to. At the kitchen counter, Jen notices the prized package Hana received earlier. She excitedly asks if Hana has opened it, and the woman simply shakes her head. As Hana starts unboxing, Jen stops her and suggests they film a video. Hana refuses since the product has yet to be released. Once Hana opens the box, the pair discover a single headband device called Omnia. They are confused because there's no manual, which compels them to find out how to operate it. Hana grabs it and powers it up, causing her computer's power to flicker. To check it, they rush to Hana's setup, and the login tab automatically appears. Hana inputs the necessary code, but the loading takes time. While they're waiting, Jen asks why Cenex chose her as the recipient. Hana discloses that the company wants pro gamers to test it before the launch. Jokingly, Jen opines that top players aren't chosen because a bad review from them will negatively affect the product's marketing. She emphasizes that it has been like Hana is the best choice. For Hana, she believes she has the edge over them since she had the privilege of testing the device. Out of nowhere, the pair hears Omnia's voice, who guides Hana on how to wear it. A calibration begins, and Omnia familiarizes them with the device. According to Omnia, Hana is wearing an electroencephalography device that analyzes her brain. She also informs her that the image she's seeing on her screen is a real-time recording of her brain activity. Moreover, the device is capable of controlling any gadget, game, or program Hana uses. However, what surprises Hana the most is that it can read her mind before she's aware of the thought. Omnia advises her to complete some exercises to help the calibration process. In turn, the device will work for her alone. During the typing exercise, Hana realizes that she can type using her mind. Jen isn't as impressed, believing she's just hallucinating. As proof, Hana faces Jen and types her thoughts, impressing her. Later on, Jen entertains Hana's landlord since her friend is too preoccupied with the device. The man demands that Hana pay her rent, for she's past her dues. Jen swears that her friend will pay him, causing him to leave. After dealing with him, Jen bids Hana farewell, but she informs her that she has a day off tomorrow. Thus, Hana is free to call her if something interesting happens. Throughout the night, Hana refuses to sleep, determined to complete the exercises. Omnia recommends that she rest, for it senses that her neural reaction time is slowing. That morning, Hana absentmindedly cuts herself with a floss. Suddenly she hears a knock, and the familiar voice reveals that it's the child yesterday. At Hana's door, the child asks why she can't play with her, but the woman evades the question. Hana wonders if there are other playmates in the building, to which the child denies. Hana shares her childhood, as she can see herself in the child's shoes. Back when she was a child, her mother forbade her from leaving their house, afraid that something terrible might happen to her. To cope with the isolation, Hana found solace in games, especially Tetris. She offers to lend her game console to her, but the child disappears abruptly. Due to Hana's interaction with her, she retrieves an old box containing her childhood memories. She fondly looks at her photographs with her father, who appears to have doted on her and gave her a taste of the outside world. Following the emotional reminiscing, Hana invites Jen to her apartment, for she has something interesting to try with her. Hana orders her to cut her with a knife, but Jen refuses. Still, Hana is persistent in convincing her friend, much to Jen's disappointment. Once Jen has left her apartment, Hana proceeds with the calibration exercise, the pain. She quickly cuts herself, which earns recognition from Omnia. Now, the calibration is complete, but the device will continuously learn and work with her mind. Hana tests the device by joining a competitive game lobby. 
There, she discovers that her skills are enhanced, making it advantageous for her. In the middle of the trial game, Hana notices a strange presence coming from her bedroom, but she ignores it, thinking it's just a figment of her imagination. She returns her attention to her computer, and within minutes, she dominates the game. Realizing the device's power, Hana applies in a tournament to earn money. When she's finished with the form, she sees her childhood toy, a tennis ball, rolling into the living room. She carefully tries to check it, but the sudden knock from her landlord halts her. As Hana negotiates with him, the ball's appearance is distorted. It turns out that it's a hologram Omnia created. Hana promises the landlord that he'll have her rent payment soon, but he refuses to believe it. Dismayed, the man reminds her that she had promised it days ago, confusing Hana. She thinks they just had the conversation yesterday. Instead of confirming, the man gives her a warning tone, so Hana guarantees he'll have her payment by next week. The landlord begins to leave, but Hana stops him. She inquires about the child she frequently converses with, because she wants to lend her the game console. However, she doesn't get a response as the man has already left. Moments later, Hana is working out when she receives an email stating that her tournament application has been approved. That night, as Hana prepares, she cuts herself again with the floss. This time, she bleeds heavily, and her face turns diabolic. Hana awakens and realizes it's just a nightmare. Still, she's so traumatized that she checks if she actually injured herself. Disturbed, Hana contacts Jen and invites her to come over. Then, she apologizes to her. In the meantime, Hana entertains herself by interacting with holographic objects Omnia helps her create. By morning, Hana tinkers her desktop computer in preparation for the tournament. She informs Jen about it, especially about her plan to win the $250,000 prize by taking advantage of Omnia. Of course, Jen disapproves of this because she believes Hana is basically cheating. She explains that she has read the tournament terms and doesn't find any restrictions on using the device. Jen reminds her that it's because Omnia is still unreleased, but Hana clarifies that it's the point. Before the tournament, Hana encourages Jen to place a bet on her to secure a huge sum of money. She considers it an act of compensation for taking care of her. This sounds promising, so Jen accepts her proposition. Just as planned, Hana flawlessly wins every round in the competitive game, much to the pair's satisfaction. While Hana is still competing, the pair discuss their plans once they acquire the money. For Jen, she wants to buy a car and a new pair of shoes for Hana. On the other hand, Hana aims to pay her rent for the rest of the year. Hana encounters a connectivity problem, thinking that Jen might be using her Wi-Fi. Jen denies it, which confuses her. Suddenly, Hana's screen tries to grab her, causing her to scramble away. Jen worries about her, but Hana asks her if she has seen the hand that has emerged from her screen. Her friend denies it, which confuses her. Now anxious, Hana announces that she's taking a break, so she orders Jen to play the game in her stead. She removes the device and heads to the bathroom to release her pent-up emotions. Upon taking her medication, Hana notices that her wound starts to heal. Jen's knocking distracts her, and her friend regretfully informs her that she lost the current round. Regardless, Jen assures her that she's still qualified for the next round. Later, in the living room, Hana shares about the child she frequently converses with. She has learned that the child's mother wouldn't play with her daughter. Confused, Jen tells her she has never seen any children in their building. Hana supposes the child's mother is also agoraphobic, like hers. According to Hana, her mother refuses to leave their house and even forbids her from doing so. Since agoraphobia can be influenced by genetics and environmental factors, Hana has developed the same reclusive behavior. Jen offers to help and guide her in conquering the outside world. Hana appreciates her friend's kindness, but she's comfortable enough inside her apartment. The following day, after sending off Jen, Hana notices a presence behind her front door. Thinking her friend is pranking her, Hana tries to chastise her, but instead, she encounters the child. This brings a smile to her face, so she promises to lend her a game console. However, once Hana retrieves it, the child is nowhere to be found, and her front door is wide open. Hana heads outside, trying to look for her. In the hallway, her door shuts, causing her to panic. Though she has a spare key, her chain lock prevents her from entering her unit. The lights flicker, and an entity appears. She releases an ear-piercing scream, urging Hana to try to break inside. Strangely enough, Hana finds herself in her apartment, unscathed. For this experience, Hana contacts the company's agent to ask about other testers' experiences with the device. She wonders if they have experienced any side effects, but the agent dismisses the idea. He gives her the option to return the device if she has trouble using it, but Hana refuses because she needs it for the competition. 
During the ongoing tournament, Hana places third, but due to overworking herself, she falls asleep. Moments later, she awakens and finds that Jen is yet to arrive at her apartment. Instead, she's surprised to see the child in her bedroom. She wonders how she got in, but the child simply tells her they've always been in her apartment. The entity appears behind the child and shrieks at Hana, causing the disturbed woman to float. When the shrieking ends, Hana becomes confused as things seem to be normal again. Moreover, the child and the entity are nowhere to be found. That night, Jen visits Hana's apartment to support her friend. As Jen cheers her, Hana loses consciousness and begins to see ominous dream sequences. First, there's a scene where water droplets are pouring from Hana's hand. Second, she's mysteriously holding a screwdriver. Third, she's affectionately hugging Jen. Lastly, there's blood in her shower knob. Not long after, Hana awakens and finds Jen missing. Looking at her screen, she finds out that she has won the tournament. Her momentary happiness ends as her only confidant has missed her new achievement. She tries to search for her and notices that her shower is running. Believing it's Jen's doing, Hana heads to the bathroom, hoping to invite her to celebrate. Again, Hana fails to find Jen in there, further confusing her. Hana proceeds to call Omnia, questioning if the device is the one showing her the strange dreams. Omnia rejects the idea and clarifies that it's all Hana's influence, as the device is only following what she asks for. Later on, Hana's landlord visits her to confirm that he has received her payment. Hana asks him if he has seen Jen, but the man denies it. During her meal, Hana decides to eat the noodles from her refrigerator, but she soon discovers that they are actually maggot infested. Now, Hana starts to worry about how many days have passed since Jen has last visited. Despite the concerning matter, Hana remains glued to her computer, uncaring that the apparition is looming behind her. A strange sensation coming from her cut wakes her from her trance. Slowly, she unwraps the bandage, only to see that it's infected. The following morning, Hana receives a package containing her championship trophy. Along the kitchen counter, she spots a box with a note attached to it. Hana realizes that Jen has gifted her a new pair of shoes, just like she had promised. Immediately, Hana puts on the shoes, but a sudden phone call catches her attention. Hana hopes it's Jen, but the caller is an unknown number. Out of nowhere, a static noise followed by a maniacal laugh escapes from the speakers. For a second, Hana is bothered, but the sound abruptly stops when Jen appears. Her friend pants heavily, and she's soaking wet. Regardless, Hana is ecstatic to see her, causing the woman to embrace her tightly. She proceeds to untangle herself from Jen, but Hana sees a bloody screwdriver in her hand. Panicking, Hana promises to seek help for her, so she grabs her phone. Strangely, when she faces Jen's direction, her friend has disappeared. Hana screams in frustration, which distorts her environment. Upon noticing this, Hana confronts Omnia, accusing it of trying to control her. Hana wants to break free from the device, so she removes it. However, no matter how many times she does it, the device keeps on attaching to her head. Without a choice, Hana decides to leave the confines of her apartment, believing it's not safe for her anymore. After packing her belongings, Hana musters the courage to leave her unit. She uses her determination to find Jen as an encouragement. Before she can leave, the child's hand tugs on her jacket, causing her to stop. This leads her to see a glitchy scene of Jen's body getting dragged inside her bathroom. To check it, Hana heads there, where she comes across Jen's rotting body lying in her bathtub. A terrified Hana leaves the bathroom. This time, she's able to see the real state of her apartment, a complete mess. She starts to wonder how long she's been staying in the apartment, but no one can give her an answer. Shortly after, Hana leaves her apartment to head to Jen's, still in denial about her friend's death. Once she enters her unit, Hana is confused as to why she's transported back to her place. There, she sees a memory of her fatally stabbing Jen. The Hana from her vision turns around, and her face turns diabolical. Scared for her life, Hana sprints outside, but a monster akin to the VR game she tested starts to chase her. The more Hana tries to avoid the monster, the more it multiplies. Eventually she reaches the rooftop, where she experiences the rain after years of isolation. The monsters appear, urging Hana to jump off the roof. Instead of falling to her death, Hana returns to her apartment, where she encounters the apparition. It turns out it's her mother, and she begs her to liberate her. Then, she questions her mother as to why she killed Jen. She doesn't get an answer as she has disappeared. Hana hears a series of loud knocks coming from the police. Due to her fear that her mother will hurt more people, Hana promises to stay with her. The police break her door and proceed to infiltrate her apartment. Again, Hana experiences the same scenario she had when she was a child. Ages ago, a group of police planning to take her entered their residence. 
Her mother refused to let go of her, so she clung to Hana as she played Tetris. Because of this memory, Hana realizes that the child she used to converse with is none other than herself. Also, Omnia is actually a glitchy device that has manifested Hana's darkest trauma. At present, the police officers apprehend her, and she's coping by playing Tetris. A policewoman enters the bathroom and discovers Jen's body. They remove the device from Hana's head, causing her to laugh maniacally. As they take her outside, Hana protests, but the officers refuse to let her go. Provoked, she releases an ear-piercing scream, subduing the officers. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.